meet Zoe Bowie. Say hi, Zoe. Say hi. Hey, I'm Shanae. After spending years on a deeply inward spiritual journey, I'm now ready to spiral on out. Here's my journey of me doing just that, living my life. Welcome to my documentary. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of season one of my vlogumentary. I wanted to share with you guys another addition to our family. So, world meet Zoe Bowie. Say hi, Zoe. Say hi. Say hi. So, Zoe is the latest addition to our family. We brought her in October, mm, sometime this month in October. <laughs> um, she was eight weeks when we got her. We did get her from a breeder. Um, the story is pretty interesting, as per usual. Um, it wasn't long after we'd gotten Luna, whose big old tail is now in the video. Um, <laughs> Luna's actually pretty big, by the way. Luna, come. Come. Come here. Come here. Boop, 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 boop. See, she's so big now <laughs> compared to when you guys saw her. And we did cut her hair down um, just to get rid of the puppy fur. All right. We want to play, but it's not playtime yet. All right? So wait. Luna is over five months now. Zoe is just around 10 weeks now. Um... She was eight weeks when we got her. We've had her for almost two weeks. Tomorrow will be two weeks. So she'll be around 10 weeks tomorrow-ish this weekend. She was born August 14th while Luna was born May 20th. So she's about three months behind, two or three months behind Luna. Um, but not too long after we got Luna, um, Steven's coworker sent him a, a photo of um, a new litter of puppies that his sister's his sister had purchased two puppies from this breeder in the past, and Stephen absolutely loved the way his sister's uh, dog looked because her sister's his his coworker's sister's dog had the same um, hair pattern as Zoe does. It's called Chocolate Merle, and so Stephen was like, "Man, I want me a, a it's and they're Australian Labradoodles." So she's Australian Labradoodle, so she's mixed with Australian Shepherd Lab. Really. <laughs> Labrador Retriever and Poodle. So she's an Australian Labradoodle. And um, that's how you get the chocolate merle pattern, you know, because Poodle and Labrador definitely don't have the chocolate merle pattern. So I'll show her again for you guys. This is her hair pattern. So she's considered a chocolate merle. She also, I'm going to try to insert a picture because she's not, you know, very keen on being in the camera. Um, but she has one blue eye and one green eye. But initially, um, again, when we saw the, when he, when his coworker sent him the photo of the litter, Stephen was like, oh gosh, why would he do this to me? You know, because we just got a puppy and Stephen's like, man, she's got some Merle ones, some, some chocolate Merle ones. And so he was like, okay, well, if it's around this price, you know, then I'm going to be suckered in. And I was just like, hey, babe, you know, if you really feel that that's what's right, um, and you feel that, you know, like that's perfect timing and the way that everything's meant to work out. I'm, I'm behind you 100, 1000%. Like I, I know I would be the one home with two puppies all day, but I was like, you know, Hey, if, if that's how it's meant to work out, then we get to get training with two puppies out of the way and we don't have to worry about, you know, bringing another one in at a later time because puppyhood is just, it's it's tough <laughs> so um it ended up working out the price ended up being exactly around where he wanted it to be and um so we put down a deposit we that was when the puppies were around one two weeks old hubby thought he was gonna get a boy dog and he was like he wanted specifically a dog that was chocolate merle meaning mostly like light brown and dark brown mixed together with a little bit of white and he really wanted a dog that had blue eyes. And he didn't know if that was going to be possible because most of the dogs that had blue eyes from this breeder, the breeder hadn't really, we hadn't seen any. And even the picture she showed us, she was like, the picture she sent us was one that was um, white chocolate merle. So it had a lot of white mixed in with a dark brown and light brown. And that had blue eyes. Um, 
But, you know, we were just like, if it's meant to work out, it's meant to work out exactly, you know, how it's meant to. So, when the dogs were around six weeks, she brought um, all of her Merles that she had, um, including a girl, even though we had told her we wanted boys, but obviously God had something else planned because we ended up with a girl. <laughs> um, but she had brought three chocolate, uh, three Merles, and two of them were boys, one of them was a girl. And when she brought us to meet them around six weeks, we brought Luna along because we wanted to see which dog she would gravitate to and then which dog kind of we felt vibed with us as a whole, like not just Stephen and I, but also, you know, Luna, because hello, if you're having two dogs, you don't want to have dogs that are going at it. You want dogs that get along. Um, so we got there and instantly once we let Luna go to the little playpen she had set up, um, with the dogs in it, she instantly made contact with Zoe. They were sniffing each other's noses. And then after that, she didn't really make contact with any of the other dogs. So I took that as a note. Um, also, you know, with having the three dogs in the pen, it was kind of hard to tell which one was a boy and which one was a girl, even though she told us. We were just kind of, you know, playing with them, touching them, and seeing which ones kind of responded well to us. Um, so she was the most vocal out of the three. And she was the one that had the bluest eyes. Actually, the other ones, I don't even think had blue eyes. They both had brown. Um, and so we were really amazed by her eyes. She was really vocal. She wanted to be picked up by us. Uh, and then when we did pick her up, it just felt right. The other dogs, when I touched one of them, they kind of shied away. And the other one just wasn't interested. So it was kind of like, you know, your dog really does pick you a lot of the times. Like you think you're picking your dog. But a lot of times when you go and meet your dogs, like your potential dog, like you end up getting chosen by the dog. Um, so we chose her that day. We took like a cute little family photo. And then two weeks later, we actually picked her up um, from the breeder. And she's been with us ever since. So that's the story behind Zoe. Um, her name, Zoe, means life. And that was just, you know, the name that just, you know, her, her eyes, especially now that I know that she has a blue and a green, like it reminds me of the earth and life in general, because you have, you know, the green as far as the trees and everything and the blue is the water. But initially that one really, really bright blue eye she had made me just think of lakes and all of the life that water provides. And, you know, then we kept meeting her. We picked her up on a Saturday, but we met her on a Sunday and you know, I was just like, you know, it, it just felt right, the name Zoe. Um, it felt like it fit her personality because she's very vocal. She's very lively. She has a lot of energy. Um, so that's what we decided to name her. And again, she's been with us now for about two weeks. It has been a rough two weeks. I am not going to lie. I've been tested so many days in so many ways. Uh, but there's so much that I've learned because raising her at eight weeks is totally different than when we got Luna at 11 weeks. Um, even though they neither one of them were potty trained, like Luna was not potty trained, she was not trained in any way, shape, or form. Zoe wasn't either, but it was just two different environments so that they came from. So yeah, it was definitely different. It has been different training. Um, Zoe is catching on to things like sit and stay and come pretty easily, but potty training has definitely been a nightmare. Um, she's peed on the floor more times than I can count. But we did come up with a solution that so far for the last 24 hours has been working amazingly. Um, so that's really awesome. Her and Luna get along amazingly. They play together. Luna's learning to be very gentle because Zoe's a lot smaller than her right now. She will probably be around the same size that Luna is. So we're prepared to have two bigger dogs. So yeah, the one thing I will say about her story was when we brought her home, she was covered in poop because she pooped in the crate. Um, that she and we received a lot of stuff from the breeder like a crate a blanket and all this stuff You know like a blanket that smelled like home and things like that We got rid of all of that minus her documentation because it turned out she ended up having fleas I keep trying to give the breeder the benefit of the doubt, you know things happen the lady um, Her and her husband are a bit older. So, you know, maybe they didn't notice of course, my mom and my husband are like, no, she knew. She gave you that dog and she knew it had <laughs> fleas. But the crazy thing is, is that she told us, you know, she's going to need a bath because we gave her a bath prior, but she pooped in the crate. And so you're going to need to give her a bath, but make sure you don't wash here because we applied, you know, a flea, basically like a flea medicine there on her skin, like a topical one, um, because she was too small at that time to be taking the flea medication. 
um, to prevent fleas. And so really, we didn't think anything of it. And so we gave her a bath initially when we brought her home. So yeah, I gave her, we, we gave her a bath when we brought her home. And we didn't, I didn't notice anything, you know, out of the ordinary. I didn't notice any bugs or anything, you know. And it wasn't until late that night um, when my husband was like really looking at her and things like that. Um, because he had saw a bug on her. And we do have these little beetle bugs that come in our apartment every now and then. So she ended up having fleas. So that night we got her, we were up till 5 in the morning picking fleas off of her. I would not sleep until I knew every single flea was off. So we washed her with Dawn like three or four times. We picked all of the fleas off and killed every single one. We threw away everything that came with her, anything that she touched in our house. Like she touched Luna's dog bed and her blanket. We threw out because we know that fleas can jump onto soft materials to try to wait for another host. We just wanted to make sure we didn't have this issue continuing on. So that was a doozy. And then again, training her has been a bit of a doozy. But we're starting to get the hang of things. We're starting to get in a flow and a routine. Um, I have to do another video on just the lessons that these both of these dogs have taught me because it's been a lot. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to introduce you guys to Zoe. This is part of us deciding to live life and not put our lives on hold and just trusting God and trusting that we're being led in the right directions and having fun and playing with life. Um, yeah. That's, that's what this all is, you know? So thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any questions for me regarding the doggies, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Bye.